Hey GovCon Giants, Eric Coffey here. Today's show is one of our newest, latest and greatest episodes on Making of a Giant. If you have not heard, if this is the first time you're learning about it, we just released a new podcast entitled Making a Giant. That's right. This is a podcast episode where we feature persons who have won contracts, but it's not their 10th contract. It's not their 11th contract. It's their first contract. That's right. Numero uno. So this is the person's first contract, and we'd like to showcase you real people that, again, you can identify with, you can see yourself in their position, you've probably walked in their shoes before. A lot of folks have said, Eric, I love what you're doing on the side of motivation and showing us where we can go, but what about when we start, right? And so today, this is episode number two of Making of a Giant, where we are showing you exactly where to start. Now, this young lady today, Lilani, reached out to me in January of 2020, just before the global pandemic, via LinkedIn. She was not one of my students. She was not in one of our courses. She was watching my videos, and she said to me, awesome videos, great work, and it reminded her to stay the path and that she was on the right track. She had already on her own successfully obtained her 8A certification. She, her former training and experience was an accountant. And so she, again, very smart, highly intelligent, just needed some, a little bit more direction and some guidance. Fast forward a few months later, I brought her in, introduced her to Maria, and Maria, along with Randy, worked with her, sharing the things that we were doing, sharing some of the things that we were working on, and also the things that were working for us, some of our recipes for success. And then, fast forward, we worked with her on a project, helped her get involved in a few contracts, and long and behold, she won her first source source contract. So. On this particular episode, you're going to hear all of that, all of Lani's story. And again, for those who may not be aware, the Making of a Giant is hosted by our very own Maria Martinez. That's right. The one that we all love, Baby Goat Maria Martinez. So stay tuned for this entire episode of Making of a Giant. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave comments and feedback show notes below because again as we are starting something new and we're creating we're building we want to hear what's working uh, what should we do better how can we improve again this is the results this is the direct results of people like yourself suggesting the type of content they'd like to hear from us so congratulate yourself thank Maria thank the team for helping put together episode number two of making of a giant welcome Lilani and Maria I want to welcome Leilani, which is a personal friend of mine that I've actually worked in the past year with. So I wanted her to come on and just share all her stories that she's shared with me this past year, because I'm telling you, she is one that you have to admire everything she does for like what she says, the love of contracting. So welcome, Leilani. Hi, Thank you Maria. so much. Thank you so, have- so much for everything you've done, everything oh God, you do, you. and everything we're going to do in the future. Okay. So I just want you to briefly introduce yourself to everybody out there. Hi, everyone. I'm Leilani, the Christ and Leilani from Lace Consulting Group. I'm also a small business, and i um, I say I've been doing this government contracting on my own for about five and a half years, but I've heard of it, but never really paid attention. And so my background, going back to my background, I have about 26, 27 years experience doing accounting um, in the architecture, engineering, construction world as a project accountant, staff accountant, controller, all the way to CFO. And how did I get started? Well, Wait, and you, you're doing okay. accounting. Are you doing it? Does Lay Consulting do accounting? Yes, with Dell Tech. So I do um, implementation with, um, with Dell Tech and uh, Dell Tech Cost Point, Dell Tech Vision, um, Ajira, and um, Govwin. So I still do that currently. As uh, my bread and butter, you know, because you don't know when you're going to hit those contracts. So, you know, you still have to take care of your family. I guess and I'm not really out there looking for clients. So it's pretty much just word of mouth with accounting. Okay. 
And for those that don't know what Deltec is, what is Deltec? Deltec is an ERP software that um, it's integrated uh, with CRM accounting and the resource planning. So depending on, it depends on if you're doing 100%, let's say 100% federal work, then I think the very popular um, software is Deltec Crosspoint. And um, if you're doing sort of blended private sector and government's uh, government work, then there's vision. So it just really depends on your company. Yeah. Okay. So the you've na- been doing the nature of your business. So you've been doing accounting for about 27 years, which you probably started when you were like two years old. <laughs> I know, right? I was right? out of high school. Yeah. yeah. Like, yep. And then you started Lays five years ago? Five, about five and a half years ago. And why did you start it? Well, you know, I was always in accounting and dealing with contracts. And I would always wonder, how are they getting these projects from GSA mm-hmm. or from DOD? And I would have to go to the portal and uh, what do you call that? Enter the payments and everything. Right. So I said, well, you know what? How can I get this contract for me? I said, I'm not an architect. Then I ignored it for years. And, um, you know, to fast forward, how did I really get into this space is I would say the opportunity to grow and with a company. I want to go through the whole CPA um, exam and really, you know, and really grow with the company. But um there's a lot of politics, I guess, in a corporate world. Mm-hmm. And so I identified myself as, you know what, it's time for me. To, it's time for me to disconnect. But when I quit Maria, uh-huh. I hit a wall. I okay. said, what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> I have no clients. I have no job. And I just believe in myself. I said, you know what, maybe I need to go. And set up a nonprofit. I mean, I have a nonprofit, but I okay. do a nonprofit. So I said, okay, that's not going to work. And I said, you know what? What is out there for minorities like me? What is, there's got to be something, right? So before I even found out about A Day Hubs on Woman Owned, I was a DBE, SBE. And I said, you know what? I feel like it's not sexy enough. <laughs> you know why? When you log into an old FBO, right? Uh huh. People are stacking there. I said, this is like stacking your cert- certification. <laughs> They're eight A hubs, and I'm like, what is eight A? So you know what? I began my journey in the federal world. So I said, you know what? Let let me do some federal work. I have no idea what eight A is. I have no idea what Hubzone is. I have no idea about all this lingo. So I have to find my way in, you know, especially there's no support system. It was just me. Mm. I was going to ask you, how did you learn everything then? Because I know when I started, I had no idea what any of those things were either. Me too. So me too. How I did you know, even? I just know, okay, like Eric was saying in one of his videos, when you became an 8A or I have some whatever certification, right? I thought. They can just like hand you the platter. Oh, so you know what? I have those VIP tickets, right? Mm -hmm. You know what? I said, this is all, this is just your ticket to get in, Mm -hmm. right? Then there's a whole competition. I said, I'm just a little fish in the ocean. How am I supposed to compete? So for three months, I would say like three months. See, I showered for you, Maria, this morning. I would normally get up just on my PJs all day. Uh-huh. For three months, I was talking to my computer. I literally talking to my computer, like, where is the money for my like? <laughs> and then, boom, I said, okay, I can be an 8A, but I'll pay someone to do the 8A application. So I was making phone calls back in 2015. They told me it's going to cost $22,000. No, not $22,000, $25,000. For an application? For an application process to do my application. And I said- I knew people were making a killing and overcharging people, but I would have never thought it was that much, by the way. Please tell me you did not pay 25 grand. 
I said, you know what? I know how to read. I know how okay. to follow instructions. I know how to answer or I know how to do an application. I don't care what application, because before that, I was actually doing um, a residential care facility for the elderly. So and transitional home, anything mm-hmm. housing. I said, it's not that hard. Let me look at the application. So you just follow whatever the instructions. And then they said, Leilani, you can't, you can't be an 8A yet. Because you haven't been in business for two years. So I got yeah. rejected from here. I said, okay, I'll wait six months. I waited six months. And I opened my firm on 6 2015 Okay. So I have to wait for six months. They're like, you just opened. You just started, <laughs> right? And then I said, you know what? I'm going to try again after six months. It's not two After, years yet. Not two years. Not six two years. Months. But you know yeah, what? That I took wrote, a lot of. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So like Leilani, we said no because he had to wait two years. And I wrote a compelling letter to the SBA. And I said, I was in. They were able to remember the old database for the 8A. Like if you're approved, your application will pop up. I forgot the name of Uh huh. And so that's what happened. I became 8A in September, I believe September September 21st of 2016. A year into yes. having your business. A year and, and three months. All you did was yes. write a letter. Write a letter. And that's a secret, Maria. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And, and, and it is a secret, but it's just crazy that you had the idea to to go this, you didn't allow them to just say, no, wait two years. And then you waited two years. What gave you that like idea, that mindset, that craziness of (laughs) trying to think outside outside the box. It's like, no, I'm not going to take, no, I'm just, you know what? Let me try this. What's going to take my, my question is what's going to take for me to get in? That was kind of like my answer. Mm-hmm. And I've called different agencies and I had a common denominator. I called maybe 20 or 30. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The first quarter of um, 20, 2016. No, 2015. Yes. I can't. I can't. I can't remember, Maria. 2015, 2015. <laughs> so now you got your 8A 2016. And you had this golden magic ticket. <laughs> yeah, which it doesn't really mean anything as you go. You know, it doesn't really. And, mean and we tell people a lot uh, that a lot. Like we tell people just because you got 8A, just because you have a certification. And I and people think like, oh, like you said, like magically all these contracts are going to come to you. They're right. just going to arrive and you're going to have all this work. And then reality is it doesn't happen so right. what do you do next when reality hit and nobody was calling you your phone's not going off now my phone's not going off that's why I revert back to my background in accounting and I said you know what learning and navigating the FBO which is now beta Sam mm-hmm. gives you a whole lot of opportunities remember I was doing housing Okay. And my mother back in 2006 for the elderly. And I had veterans and I had civilians in that home. It was a five bed facility located in Lancaster, California. And I was the administrator. I was the cook. I was the case manager. I was everything, right? My mom goes to work. I handle the facility. So when she comes home, then I go to work. I said, you know what? How about housing? How about homeless. And I learned about the homeless veterans and it mm-hmm. all came, came together. And I was doing the transitional home for the probationers. There's also the Bureau of Prisons, mm-hmm. the reentry program. So that's two. I said, wow, there's a lot of stuff here in FBO, the old FBO, right? Yeah. And there's architecture. My background is architecture, engineering, construction. So, so I would call them, not only offer them mark, uh, accounting work, but also how to get in in a federal space. So there's different ways to really make money. It's just how passionate are you and how many hours in a day you're going to work? 16 hours for me to 
you know. So yeah, 16, 16 hours, sometimes 20. But there's yes, only ma'am. 24 hours in a day. How do you do right. 20 hours? That's why I'm on my PJs every day. <laughs> and I shower literally after like, I would say when my day's over and then I go to sleep. Then again, before I even wake up in the morning, I'm on beta Sam. When I get up, beta Sam. In between beta Sam. So, yes, it was so a lot. 2000, it, it's a yeah. lonely place to be. A lonely place. And a lot of people don't see that. A lot of people see all the people out there and all these like, like with and that's why the reason we're doing this podcast is like we hear all the great stories of people that have made it so far into it. So we see them. We're like, oh, they're living the life. But they forget that this is where we everyone basically started, like the 16 hour days, the waking up, you're looking at stuff, you're researching it, you're learning it, everything right. that goes the work that goes into it. And even though it's not all glitter and unicorns at times, is it worth it at the end? It's where you have to keep your mind. And my thing also was I always kept my why. You have to keep that why. Why am I doing this to keep you going? And that's very important. Now, 16 hours, 20 hours, you got your business 2015, a and then 2016, 8-8, when did you start getting contracts? September 23rd of 2017. It's, it's crazy how you know those, those, <laughs> those numbers, exact dates. That's how, that's how much it means that you know these dates. It's like birthdays yes. and anniversaries. They're very important to me because it's a very, very tiny project what I call a credit card project, you know, okay. to where once you're done, we Was it off FBO? You uh, it's off FBO. Okay. So you found it on FBO. In and Abilene, then what? Texas. In Abilene, Texas. I just responded. I said how hard it is to do carpet cleaning. I did it before. So it's not, it's going to be that difficult, right? But I just didn't know where Abilene, Texas. I didn't look at it while I was bidding. I just know it's in Texas. So I'm like, okay, I'll go. Right. Okay. So I know where you are. Can you tell people where you're located? Because I'm sure it's not Texas. Okay. I'm located in Los Angeles County, which is like Rancho Palos Verdes, like right next to like Manhattan, Redondo, Long Beach area, what they call the South Bay area. So you're all the way in uh, by LA, California, and then you went <laughs> on this project not knowing where Evelyn was. Right. Okay. So you went ahead and bid on it, and then I won the project. Is that when you Googled where it was? <laughs> yes, and I said, and oh my how God, far was it? I didn't even know Evelyn existed until I got there. So it was, I think, it's an 18 hours drive from my location to Texas. And so packed up everything. I said, I'm going to be there for three months. Got an apartment. I literally was paying $500, yeah, $500 a month. And I was just like, wow, it's a one bedroom apartment. And um, my living room, I had all my equipment, right, for the car, for the carpet. Um, it's called the carpet extraction, right? And it was a lonely place to be. It was in September. So I didn't start until October. So I said, I'm going to be in Texas. And I'm really trying to uh, really understand at that time, why am I in Texas? I really did not like the project. But I said, you know what? This is a start. Because mm-hmm. on your first day at work, after you hired your staff, right, they didn't show up. Yes, ma'am. They did no. not show up. So you drove 18 hours, got an apartment. Now what you're in Texas. Sunday. Yes. <laughs> and I then they day. don't show up. You don't show up. Right. And I met them the night before to show up. You know, I said, uh-huh. you guys don't have transportation. I'll, I'm willing to pick you guys up and do the project. No, ma'am. No call. Nothing. No show. <sighs> what do you do oh, then? What do you do? Hey, you, you know, the contract's <laughs> under your company, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to do the work. Are you willing to extract this dirt from the carpet? That's the so question. So you did the job? I did. 
personally yes. extract personally the dirt. extracting the dirt from the carpet. You know, um, it's the lodging. I think it's the lodging, um, kind of like a motel hotel mm-hmm. lodging inside okay. the Air Force Base, right? Yeah, so that was like, my that was my assignment, right? And, and I you know, alone did it. Yes, until I bumped into a pastor, right? I was I I did fasting and I just believed in God that He's gonna bring people to me, right? Uh-huh. And um, the pastor actually saved me because he has an existing contract, even now, a still existing contract with the BX. And so he said, mm-hmm. Leilani, I'm going to help you. You can actually do the work in eight hours and be done. So it's like a one day, one day a week. So I went okay. back to L.A. after December and I went to Long Island after that. Yes, ma'am. Long Island. I didn't drive. I didn't drive. New York? So I flew like, to New York. And- yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. You didn't, you went on vacation, I'm hoping. Not no, for another it was contract. I, I actually, um, it's a private contract with an engineering firm. It's an environmental engineering firm. And they needed help with Dell Tech. So okay. after the carpet cleaning, I have to be an accountant the following year. For three Please. months. And I canceled okay. my contract. It was too cold. Oh, yes. up in Long Island. I thought it was in Texas. Yes. <laughs> but, so Texas you finished the I carpet. Left. You finished the carpet job, complete it, satisfactory. You got paid. Yeah. And I got then paid. You put it on hold. The pa- yeah, the pastor was actually doing the work. So it was like a three years job. Oh. And the pastor, the pastor helped me, assisted me. Yes. Oh, well, so it wasn't a very small contract if it was for three years. Um. For three, okay, it's sixty five thousand for five years. So that's a small contract. Yeah, yeah. When you start dividing but, it, <laughs> but you know what? I didn't look at the numbers. I okay. looked at what's going to happen. I would say I was looking at, hey, is this little project going to take me somewhere? Is it going to mm-hmm. open an opportunity for the next contract to happen? And okay. so mm-hmm. how did you feel that, when you got awarded the contract? I, I thought I won a million dollars, <laughs> but it's only 65,000 for five years. So I didn't really look at it that way. I think it's just a fact, the high of winning a contract. Mm-hmm. It didn't and even did matter you, if it was like 20,000, 30,000. How did you feel when you got on the base for the first time? Because I know that feeling of like, wow, yeah, I'm, because I'm I made a it. Right. And I feel like, oh, my God, I'm in this place and I think I like it, you know? Yeah. It's just like, wow, the government really trusted me. So I have to work <laughs> more, you know? I'm like, they trusted me in my yes. company. So you know what? I have to deliver what I need to deliver and maybe do more, you know? Because just imagine doing carpet extraction, cleaning, right? If there, if the place is not done while it's clean, I'm like, I even ended up picking up trash cleaning it as a janitor but I said you know what I didn't mind because they gave me the experience to do mm-hmm. both yeah. yeah is it still ongoing or is it completed no now? no they actually it's completed about uh we're in 2020 right mm-hmm. um it was I think we stopped like sometime summer of last year okay. because they already built the new lodging oh yeah. okay yeah yeah, so the old law, I was cleaning the old lodging mm-hmm. while they're doing construction on some of the lodging, but now it's built. So they now have brand new carpets, right? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they'll call you again. Maybe you'll have to go back to Abilene, Texas. Abilene, Texas. I actually <laughs> like it. It's a very humbling experience, you know, because for a small contract like that, you mm-hmm. really have to budget and look at your, look at your finances, because my breakfast is Dollar Tree, my lunch is Dollar Tree, and my dinner is Dollar Tree. And then you kind of have to figure out what can you eat for breakfast and lunch and dinner. You know, you have to be on a budget down to the penny. Yes. So if you were doing, okay, this is janitorial. It's just got me that you said that. Um, you were doing accounting. How yes. did you even like imagine that you were able to just do janitorial then? It's not hard, Maria. Um, 
at first, you know, I wanted to cry because I'm like, oh gosh, I'm an accountant and my mom still doesn't know what I do up to this point. You know, my mom's a nurse. It's like, how are you doing janitorial? You're an accountant. I said, mom, I can be, I can be a janitor today and I can be a real estate person tomorrow and I can be operator of a homeless shelter or something like that. You know, I guess I can go in different in different lanes and then I'll be okay. And I've always visioned that about myself, you know. But one thing I really, really learned is you have to have a community. You have to have a village. It's kind of like having having kids. You have to have the support system because there are things that you're missing out information. So I guess I'm not gonna sound like a salesperson, but the community that I joined with you guys is just like confirming that I'm in a right, I'm in a right space. Who did you have for this first project? Who what supported you, you through it all? In 2016, it's just pretty mm-hmm. much me. Me. That's why it took it took me a while to really grow as a company because it was just me. And I would, you know, you kind of reach out to people and, you know, you kind of have to vibe with them because it's not just like doing work and looking for someone, a collaborative partner. Can you really trust them? Mm -hmm. If they win and you supported them, are they going to take off? Are they going to take off and not pay me and take, take my money? Oh, you don't know that. So that's true. You know, I was, I was really learning as I go. And then when I found you guys, Eric's team, I said it was just like a confirmation, like, hey, I'm in the right spot. So this was 2017 when you got the contract. When did you find GovCon Giants? I've been listening to Eric where we're in 2020, right? I would Mm -hmm. say like maybe the summer, I know, like early 2019. But then I just kind of like, oh, you know what? I'll listen to it. They're not listen to it. I'm like, oh, you know, it's just talking, whatever, whatever. I'm like, you know, because I was listening to him and I forgot this other guy. Um, but there were three of them. But mm-hmm. then I guess, I guess Eric's delivery is like, I would say the words that he's using. I'm like, okay, government is already difficult. But I think he brings it down to where we have a better understanding, like, hey, plain English, like, Yes. In order for us to really understand, because it's hard. Like, I didn't know how to read. Like, how am I going to do my contract? How am I going to send my proposal? What the hell is sources? But you had already what done is, it. You know, at that time. So I have to learn that on my own, Maria. Mm-hmm. And so when I was listening to Eric, it was just like a review. I was just okay. like, oh my God, I went through that. I'm like, oh my God. So I said, let me just listen to this. Not. And so between legit, 2017 you know? to 2019, what did you do? I actually was bidding and I have no hits. I was like, oh my God, it's like going to <gasps> two, the years. two years. Of, I'm like, two years. I'm like, two years. Just, I was busy doing accounting. Mm-hmm. You know, and bidding and bidding and bidding. How do you, right. how did you not get burnt out or overwhelmed? Like, two years of doing something, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So how do you keep going of two years of just turning in bids, turning in bids and not getting anything back? Because most people would have given up. Yeah, I know it's going to happen. I I just know it's going to happen. I just Mm -hmm. didn't know when, you know, and you're, when you're at the point that, um, with your trade lines, like, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and now mm. you have to really ask and question yourself, like, how am I going to pay all my bills? What's my backup plan? So my backup mm-hmm. and my backbone is doing accounting. Okay. So accounting back. is the backup plan. Now. Right. Accounting is the backup plan. You always have to have something where you can go and like, okay, I can make money this way. And plus I was, ha- I had the transitional home as my okay. income. Right. So at that time, I said, okay, transitional homes stop paying me a lot, especially LA County probation. And then I have the accounting, which pays the bills. Mm-hmm. And I have to find time to go back into Beta Sam or FBO. I just did not give up. You know, I, I don't know what kept me going. I think it's because 
that hunger for the next hunger for trying to get the contracts. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's all I want to do. I just want to work hard, win contracts, work hard, win contracts, work hard, win contracts to where I sabotage a lot of relationships from families, from good friends, because they haven't seen Leilani in a while. So those are the sacrifices like mm-hmm. within that two years, even now. Even the now. only time I went on vacation is when I went to Miami. And that was this year. Yeah, it's not even a vacation because I did work. I submitted three proposals when I was in Miami. <laughs> no. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So two years go by. And then 2019, you joined the community. And then what right. happens? And then connected with Eric and they connected with you. And I said, you know what, at first, you know, the way we did the project or strategize it, I was open. You have to be open. You have to be open to possibilities. You just have to open not only to possibilities. And I have issues with trust. I want to interject that I did help a company, an SDVOSB, Mm -hmm. to write a contract. This was like maybe two or three years ago. They won $5 million for five years. And they said they want to pay me $20 an hour. And I said, I'm going back to California. That's when I went to Philly. That I drove from LA to Philly. <laughs> yeah. That's another story. <laughs> yeah. So this was yeah, after another story. this was after Texas. No, this is before Texas. Because I was in Philly the summer of 2017. Yes. Before I drove to Texas, I I drove from LA to Philadelphia. And I said, I got to be there on Monday because I have to report at 7 o'clock to the VA in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I I got there at 5.30. I'm like, I have no time to, to like check in. No, actually, I got there at 6.15. Right? I have to report at seven. So what do I do, Maria? I go into one of the gyms, took a shower, and then reported to the VA. Yes. And you helped a company win $5 million. Yeah. But you know what? This is how I look at it. There's so much projects out there. I just know how to position myself again when you have to partner with a company. What did you do for them? I wrote the proposal and supposed to be a part of that proposal mm. $20 an hour. What did you tell them? <laughs> That's it. And I walked away. Yes. Yep. You That's were it. not going to put up a fight, argue yeah. nothing. Like knowing that you away. did the work. Yeah. Yep. And I have a lot of similar stories that I walked away. Yep. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and you still are out there. I'm still here. Yes, yes, ma'am. So then, so, okay. So started your business 2015. 2016, you wrote a beautiful letter and got into 8A program bypassing two years. Yes. And then nothing happened. And then you went to Philadelphia. Yes. Got this company, $5 million, and they want to pay you less than a, probably a worker at fast food joint. Yes. yes. Then you came back. Then you drove to Texas because you <laughs> won your first contract. Yes. And then you, for the next year and a half, two years, it was just. I was bidding, doing bidding, private. Bidding. Yeah. It was just accounting work and bidding, which it was so difficult because you're in a different space. Mm-hmm. And you're doing accounting for another, you know, for a yeah. client. And then we have to switch gears and having to do and deal with a whole different world. You know, so I said, how can I connect this to? Mm-hmm. And you're so, still 80 at this point. At this you're point, I have five years to go. Okay. To go. Yeah. So then you come into a community of people and you said trust was a big issue for you. But for some yeah. reason community clicked with you yeah <laughs> I, know, I know and I know that, that personally yeah. yeah so now what where is Lace Consulting these days have um, when did you get your next project well first I wanted to say thank you guys so much 
thank you to you. You're my GC, you know, in Miami, <laughs> Florida. So um, I think, you know, during this pandemic, I won. Yes, we won like several projects. Mm-hmm. And um, I also won a, um, and, you know, partnership with Miss Miss Randy and won the project at the Air Force Base in um, Lancaster, California. And I also won a project in Chicago, Illinois, and sort of waiting for Alabama to happen with the FAA. Mm. Yeah. And oh, wow. the housing, the housing in Shreveport. Um, oh, that's housing, still going on. Yeah. So I really want to, really, I really want that project for the housing because that's been my passion. Um, okay, so you did janitorial in Texas. Yeah. The ones here in Florida have been construction. Right. Like we, we did trade, a constru- right. Yeah, we did specialty trade construction down here. Um, actually, you were the project in Miami Beach with the Coast Guard. We had also the project at the CU facility at the Coast Guard and yes, Isla Morada in the Coast Guard, which are the Florida Keys. So we had um, three here. Construction. The one with Miss Randy in California is in construction. In right. That's the one that I'm driving eight hours, you know, which I don't mind, you know. I'm trying to create a relationship, you know, any relationship that's going to come out, whether it's good or bad or nothing. Mm-hmm. But still, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to, I want to seize the moment who's going to be there, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that one is drivable. Mine were a little yeah. bit, oh, that was yeah. even a long drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's construction. And then Chicago, what kind of contract is it? It's disinfection, COVID disinfection, but we haven't started yet. That was awarded September 28th. When I was coming back, actually, when I was coming back from Shreveport and I landed, got a call, like, she was like, hi, Leilani. And I'm like, hi, do you remember me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> she said, well, I want to award you the, the project for disinfection. Do you want it? Do you accept? And you know what I said? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> I, said, I said, I am so sorry, but yes. And who, what agency is that? Army Corps of Engineers. Oh, wow. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So right now we're up to five in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a pandemic, is it? Yeah. yeah. And I'm also waiting for a sole source, which the same agency. It was so funny. So Randy's contact in Dallas is, okay, Randy's contact in Dallas and the engineer is that the Dallas office are working with is actually in El Segundo, which is LAX, mm-hmm. um, California. And my contracting officer for the sole source for the wheelchair lift, it's in the same office. So I said, you know what, this can be good. So that's why, you know what, I'm driving to Reading. So today on a Saturday. Uh, not today, tomorrow, because I think <laughs> the installation happens on the, I think mm-hmm. it's 9 p.m. Monday to 6 a.m., but probably it's going to take okay. a couple hours. And so I'm just going to do some sightseeing, you know? Yeah. California is very nice for that. When I went over there, that's what I did. I just drove. Miami is so nice, Maria. <laughs> I, I loved California when I was there. <laughs> you, oh. We could switch for a day or two. So we're up to five contracts. Now, here's what I think. Do you still get the same feeling every time you win one? Every time I write a proposal? And the, okay, ask me again. Do you still get that same feeling you got when they called you from Texas, when you win the contract? Yes. When they you? Every day, I feel like that. I'm like, who's going to hit? And I'm looking at... I'm looking at my email. Like, and when that email comes in, what's yes. the reaction? <laughs> because you know what? I'm addicted to contracting. I don't know. I know I was listening to, I think I've watched um, you and Eric's um, YouTube. You know, I think I kind of watched most of them. Mm-hmm. And I know he'll, you know, you talk about, oh my gosh, Eric is not normal. I think I'm like medium, not normal. Because <laughs> when I'm out, when I'm outside, you know, the uh, outside of my house, right? 
Mm-hmm. My engagement with people is like really knowing what they do instead of I'm supposed to be having fun, like on a vacation. Uh-huh. My opening segment is, hey, what do you do for a living? And then I'm like, hey, can I associate <laughs> that? Associate that with Beta Sam. You know, oh, wow. We have a company. So I have to learn how to turn it off sometimes. Because sometimes, you know, for other people, because they don't understand, mm-hmm. it's really is good. Oh. Oh, yeah. And like yeah. I said, your mom still doesn't know what you do. While I'm doing this, my mom doesn't know what I do. She says I work for the government, <laughs> but I do stuff for the government. So, so under, and it's crazy. And you said a community. And for me, that's important because yeah. the fact that you could actually talk to someone and they understand yeah. your pain. They understand the excitement. They understand all these terms and acronyms. It's yeah. like you get excited. It's like it's you like get now excited. I'm like, oh my god, we're in the same planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. We're so, in the same so, planet. so that's important about a community. It's like you're talking to similar minds, and we talk yeah. about that because half of the people. Well, more than half of the people in my life have no idea what government contracting is or what I do with YouTube and the podcast and things like that. They just see the layers on top. They don't yeah. actually see all the emotions that we've yeah. gone through with all the contracts. And and like for me, working with you, it's been great. But the emotions through the contracts, nobody sees that. They only see that you want a contract and that you finished it there's nothing before there's nothing in the middle because we all know like the before and the middle are the grinding moments right exactly and also i think um one thing i learned is you have to keep it humble you have to be humble and um you have to like i would say um one of um um, Eric's students, you know, um, I actually assist him with the proposal writing and, you know, whatever knowledge I can bring into the table because, um, you have to read, like, I, I know I was, I was, uh, listening to Eric's YouTube, like the reason why they win the contract or something like that. You really have to read in terms of what the government wants you to do. Mm-hmm. Don't add, don't subtract. Mm-hmm. Stick to what they actually asking you to do, you know? Yeah, and you have to keep it humble. You can't be like, oh my God, okay, I want that. Like, no, you have to share. Like, you know, I think the humility and being humble, I think it's the key too, you know? So people really want to work with you, you know? Yeah, and that's very important because you can't let everything get to your head. You can't let one contract get to your head and then you think you're better than anyone because yeah, right after that contract ends, you have to go right back to where you started again. Exactly. And then do it again, do it again, you know. And like so, you said, wait for the next one to hit. You yeah, know, wait for the, it's, it's almost like the lottery. But with the lottery, I don't know, you have to spend money. This is free. <laughs> it's just your time, you know. But you have to take into consideration, you know, you're you're pumping out time, labor, labor that you, hits as all you totally overhead. Are. Cause what time do you wake up every day? Four o'clock AM. And I go to bed early. I go to bed What's early. early. Uh nine, nine thirty. Okay. Yeah, nine, nine thirty. Some yeah, sometimes. you're getting better. Yeah, I'm getting better. Cause it huh. used to be yeah, it used to be how much time do you dedicate to government contracting? Right now, I would say 100%. Okay. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So what's what's your next goal to reach? Um, Like Eric said, you know, Leilani, I don't really bid, you know. I just look at sources sought. So mm-hmm. what I do now is I do a blended um, sources sought. But, you know, I like to also submit my proposal. Because in terms of housing and your of um, prisons with the reentry, it's hard to do a source of saw to where they're just going to give it to you because your competitions are the nonprofits. So with me, I only have one chance in terms of, uh, because this is a for-profit project in terms of bar mm-hmm. space. With a nonprofit is my, I would say, really my competitor because they can actually bid. Let's say they bid $60 per bed and I bid hundred dollars per bed, right? So they have other monies that's come in from grants and stuff like that. So they have another bucket of means 
on how to operate their business because the, maybe the nonprofit brands will pay for their payroll, will pay for all mm. their other incidentals, but the other side of that, I don't. Like, I'm not a nonprofit, so I have to bill you a hundred dollars. Yeah. So, who do you think is going to win the project? The nonprofit, yeah, yeah. because it's an open solicitation. I have no way of winning, not unless I have to. I have to, let's say, charge him fifty nine dollars and fifty fifty cents. And then you're not. You're just doing. You're it not. Volunteer. And then I'm going to have to shut my my company down <laughs> because I'm not yeah. going to make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what <laughs> your your goal is? You want that housing a uh, housing contract in the federal space? Yes, especially with the VA. I'm also I'm also do the housing navigator for um for VA Long Beach and VA um, West LA. So when they have when they have a veteran that's coming out of prison mm-hmm. or just jail, they call me and say, "Hey Leilani, do you have housing for this veteran?" And I said, "Okay." So that's when my case management, kind of like I assist the social worker on the VA side. So that's okay. the other job that I have. Yeah. And then I just get placement fee once I place them. So I'm not doing the whole, um, I'm not operating a transitional home. Yeah. I You're can just still do referral. Them. Right. Right. Yeah. But so the Shreveport do, one is housing. It's housing. So what are you waiting for? For substance abuse disorder for the homeless veterans. Yes. And that's with the VA? With the VA. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And that one you started a few months ago. Yeah, I started going after the project in July. So as you could, people could see, it's not like I turn something in and tomorrow I get to hear about it. And hey, July, and then we did a... um, we did a um, an interview with the VA. I actually mm-hmm. identified the home. I already got approved, and you know I'm just ready. But contingent upon the word of the contract, I'm not signing any documentation mm-hmm. because I'll be stuck with that house with no contract. Right, right. So now you're just so, playing the way. Yeah, to me. yeah. And I tell the realtor, look, during my interview, you're gonna have to fall back, meaning wait in your car. You know. Because I made the realtor sign an NDA as well. Okay. Yeah. And then what are you waiting for in Alabama? <sighs> when are they going to award the contract? I what w- is it for? I lit- okay, it's for janitorial, right? So it's Birmingham. There's three um, locations. Birmingham, Mobile, and Huntsville. So we'll see what happens. They were supposed to supposedly start October 1st. Oh, however, right. we're in December. I just don't know. And I watch it every day to see if they award the contract. But so you're not that. limited to your home state at all? No, no, me. Only answer. one of your contracts have been in your home state. And when we say yeah. in your home state, we're meaning eight hours away. Eight not hours even away. Like, I'm just going to get in my car and drive half an hour. And drive. Yes, ma'am. You know what? If a contracting officer says, hey, honey, I have a contract for you in Alaska. The you way know. you're going to get it is you have to drive here. You know, Maria, I'm crazy enough to drive to Alaska. I know. That is not <laughs> normal. I know. You I would drive t- anywhere for drive a, the anywhere. contract opportunity. Yes, I will drive anywhere. And if I don't have the budget, I will literally sleep in my car. I don't care. I'll find a way to shower. But it's going to be hard because of COVID, you know. Oh. So, Yeah. So I will go anywhere. I will drive anywhere. Why is that? Why do you, where's that mindset? Because I know I'm going to have that one hit. Okay. I don't know when, you know, like what I said in 2017, I know Mm -hmm. this is a little project. It's almost like it's 32 cents for carpet cleaning, right? Extraction. And I bid 15 cents. So, and I'm coming from California. So, you know, that's a lot of sacrifices. Yes. No wonder I ended up a dollar tree for my breakfast lunch. And dinner. <laughs> you know, going to make up the 15 cents somewhere. Right. Else. Exactly. Somewhere, you know, it really is a sacrifice and it'll make no sense if I, if I stop now, I'm going to keep what, going. I was going to ask what keeps you going that. I think that high of getting a contract. 
yeah, that high up getting a contract. And even if it's not my contract, but as long as I'm part of that, part of that team, I feel like just to high up getting, I'm like, how can we get another one? It, it doesn't have to be my contract. It can be like, hey, three people collaborate on the project. Mm-hmm. It's our contract. But it's just a contract. I mean, there's so much money in this game. Like, you just have to be patient. You have to be patient, grounded, discipline, discipline, and it's a lonely place to be. That's a very lonely place to be. <laughs> but I don't think it's always going to be lonely. It is lonely, Maria. Very lonely. <laughs> no, very lonely. You know, very lonely. That we, um, I used to tell people, it's. Um, I used to wake up at six, um, before six, because we had six o'clock calls. And then at night is when I work more. So at night, I'm editing the podcast. I'm doing this. And in the middle of the day, I still had to go f- figure out the contracts of everybody's working. People showed up. I had people sh- not show up, too. I had people change. And it's like, it's a lot of work, but um, like you said, I think we wait for that one hit wonder that we were going to come and it's just going to change the game completely. I know. So, and then what do you do when you don't get a hit? That's why you need a community because mm-hmm. sometimes I just want to, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm missing an action during the YouTube live or whatever like that. But when you get to, a point where you need to recharge, you need to just hear uh, testimonies of the community. Like, I'm like, wow, you're not the only one. Because sometimes you'll think like, oh my gosh, I'm the only one. Mm-hmm. You know, you're the only one I'm by myself. But when you hear testimonies and stories, you know, from from uh, GoCon Giants, I'm like, wow, I'm not the only one that's lonely. You know, there are other people that's lonely. And when I, when I say lonely, is no life because I'm always I'm married to Beta Sam. I think he's my <laughs> man. <laughs> but then Beta Sam is my man. You know, I know more of Beta Sam than knowing a guy or something like that. <laughs> I you spend lots of time with him. <laughs> I, I think Beta Sam would not disappoint me. You know, <laughs> but I just have to be patient. But when a guy can disappoint you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's very yeah. true. So I have to tell these things to myself in order for me not to. <laughs> yeah, that's on. Um, yeah. I told you, Maria, I'm crazy. So this yeah. how I just look at things, you know. But but you have to time, look at yeah, you have to look at them a certain way to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm planning for next year. What do I do? I even signed up with Amazon. What uh, is your I, next year? What What do you have planned for next year? Hey, I'm on this source of thought. Um, that's what I'm grabbing right now okay. and working on a lot of sources sought for next year. Actually, everyone, the facility support in um, in San Diego, I know with multiple states, mm. it's back on. It's another source of sought again, or like maybe pre-solicitation. Okay. It's due, it's due, I think, on the 11th. It's due sometime this week, this coming week. So everyone that's listening, it's due. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have that going on. And then with everything that has happened since you started, what has been one of the biggest lessons you've learned, like professionally and personally? So patient, because I'm not a very patient person, because it's almost like easy to give up. Because when, when, when you're burning hours on a day to day, and you're bidding, you're proposing, you're picking up the phone. Who's paying you? No one's paying nope. you, but you're paying you because it's pretty much time investment, right? You don't have time to play around, right? So what do you do? So now, you know, you have to consider your capital. You have to consider your um, your finances. You have to consider your credit. You have to do a lot of consideration before you even say, okay, I have six months of capital. So within the six months, then I have to keep bidding because money, it's just like you get money, but it comes right out. So what do you do? So I have in order for me to really find out, to really find out what's going to be for next year, I have to look at my business plan. I look at my business plan every two days and kind of like reinvent myself. 
And I said, where is the next check coming again for next year? So I dived into the Amazon drivers partnership Mm -hmm. to be the extension of Amazon. Then I'm getting ready to do FedEx and other companies, you know, just to figure it out. And then our people, you know, because people are looking for work. And I'm mm-hmm. just going to go from there. But this takes about two months to find out if you're approved or not. Okay. Yeah. What advice do you give everybody out there listening? Oh, man. Um, you have to be patient. It's not going to come. It's not <laughs> overnight. Sometimes I'm thinking, like, what if, if I didn't really have GoFund Giants? What if, if I didn't meet Eric, Maria, and the team? What's going to happen to me? I mean, I will go back to doing accounting again. And then in between is doing beta.sam, you know, because government contracting. So my um, my advice to people is you have to eat, live, and walk and really digest the government world. Because if you don't, you're going to get lost in the shuffle. You're going to be um, frustrated and you want to know your next move. So I said, just be consistent. You know, I actually have to be structured in the morning. You know, when I wake up at four, what do you do, Leilani? You fix your coffee, you do this. I turn on my computer at 4.30. I have to be in front of my computer. I have to create a schedule. I cannot be bothered like... <laughs> I have a four o'clock in the morning schedule until I go to bed. Because oh, if wow. I don't follow that, Maria, I will get lost. Yeah. And yeah. it's very easy to yeah. let and the day go yeah. by. Yeah. Trust exactly. me. I, 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 I know it. I know it. <laughs> yeah. Because, so, you know, anything can happen kind of like with the Air Force Base, right? Because it's BPA. So they're like, hey, Leilani, uh, we have a building for you. Can you price it? And I was at home. It's like, how soon can you get here? I'll be there in two hours. Boom. Get in my car, two hours drive. And when I see the place, I'm like, okay, what's your what's your charge? What's your pricing? And how soon can you do it? Well, I have my stuff in the car. I said, I'll do it now. And so I did work for an hour, but they paid me for two hours. Like, can I charge for two hours just for my time? They said, yes. Mm-hmm. I guess seizing the moment, just be passionate and also keep it humble. Keep it humble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep it humble and share and share information, you know? Yeah. Share information and yes. just be a support system for another individual that, that went through what that's going through what you went through. Yeah. Oh, Yes. There's so much money out there in the government. So we have enough. We have enough projects to pass around, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are awesome. And you, (laughs) and, and we've worked together. So I know how (laughs) awesome you are. Oh my goodness. By hearing all the stories and sharing it with others, I think it's going to help a lot of people out there just because, like you said, we're all in this together. And I think that's why I wear my shirt, Team Giants, because you and I, we've connected and we have been that team yeah. of going after one. And anything I need, you're like, yes, yes, do it. I trust yeah. you. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. And that's what has kept us going. And yeah. hopefully during my next break, I'll go back and I'll start doing it again. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for everything. And whatever and you guys need, if I can do it, you know, definitely, definitely reach out. And for out there who's who's actually wanted to do the housing, I really advocate for the homeless, giving them a second chance. I sound like a salesperson, but. Um, no, but you have to ask for it. Put it out in the world and that's how people are going to find you. So go ahead. Yeah. Anything housing, um, I want to create, the, I want to, you know, be the vessel to stop the homeless, the homelessness and, you know, with the veterans, but I can't do it by myself. I'm a, shoot, I'm a little person. I'm really a little person, <laughs> you know, um, and I want to open that like throughout the U.S. That's what I want to do. So how and can I, people get to you? They can email me at um, Leilani, L-E-I-L-A-N-I, 
at lays-consulting-group.com or just give me a call, 213-949-4240. So, but call early. That's when my brain, well, that's when my brain functions better, you know? Yeah. Throughout the afternoon, I'm like burnt. I'm burnt out. Yeah. So. Yeah, when you wake up at four in the morning, of course you're burnt. <laughs> yeah, I burnt out. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just happy in this place right now, but I guess 2021 is next month, you know? Yeah. And I also wanted to tell everyone, go to all the sites, depending on which states you are, because there's grant money out there. There's grant money, money out there for small businesses. Yes. Mm. So take advantage of that. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Ms. Maria.